Y'all ready? All right, cool. We are here. The Young Black America crew, man. We got Paul. Say what up to people, Paul. What's going on? How they doing? doing we got right. Randall. What's going on, y'all? All right, and you got me, Vaughn. Um, so, man, um, we, we serious topic today, real serious topic, and I immediately want to jump right up into this thing. Um, we saw what went down. And, and some of us have been privileged, or privileged, I don't know if it's a privilege, but some of us have been able to see uh, what happened with the young man, Terrence Crutcher. Uh, we saw that that video. It's just another video in a long line of, um, I mean, there's no other way to put it, but police brutality, it seems, against black men specifically. I just want to get some of y'all thoughts. What what are you what are you feeling? Let's start with you, Randall. What what are you what are you feeling? Um what what does this spark within you? Uh what, what like explain some of what this what this does when you see this going on. Yeah, and I it's it's crazy, man, because our first video, you know, we were talking about something very similar. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's crazy that over however many mm -hmm. weeks, months that we're back on a similar conversation. So I, I would say, for me, it really does bring about that that frustration, the exhaustion, like I was talking about before, just again having to go through seeing broken families now, um, you know, not trusting to a certain extent the, um, the you know, criminal justice system, um, just, just trying to figure out how to move forward. And, and I mean, it's, it's crazy because you see so many different statistics and people trying to one-up each other with this stat and that stat and this theory and that theory. And, you know, it's kind of like, are, are we are we really making progress mm -hmm. ever, mm -hmm. you know? And, man, it's it's just, it's really burdensome when you go in and, you know, it, it's you're trying not to have an impact your day, but it does. And when you're trying to lead and, and, and guide students who, you know, come from all different perspectives, mm -hmm. it's, you just, it, it's, it's rough, man. It's rough. Mm -hmm. You said something. So you said, um, what, uh, what, what did you just say? When will it stop or, 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 or how do we make, how do we make this? Uh, are we making progress? Let me ask you a question because this is one of the things that I want to get to, right? Because oftentimes, and this is a show to help uh, shed light on the problem. We, we understand that we don't have all the solutions. However, we do want to discuss some solutions of what have you also, right? So before I even get to Paul, when you talk about making progress, what does... What does that look like to you? What What are some things in your opinion when you think about making progress? What goes off in your mind? I, I just mm -hmm. I just want this because somebody might be wondering how what they can do to help progress along. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And maybe something that you say will spark them. So what when you say talk about progress, can you break that down for us a little bit more? Sure. So so in my mind is 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 twofold, mm -hmm. right? So in one part, it's the interpersonal progress. Mm -hmm. So not judging or not minimizing or demeaning somebody's experience mm -hmm. and perspective uh, just because you haven't lived it, mm -hmm. right? So when I say I have to have real conversations with myself and God before mm -hmm. I go out every day and, and drive my car or if I have a brake light out mm -hmm. and I have some real concerns about my livelihood, mm -hmm. right? So, so acknowledging that that could be true for me and many other people who look like mm -hmm. me and it may not be yours, mm -hmm. Right. That doesn't mean you directly are guilty of anything in particular, but simply acknowledging on an interpersonal level that, you know, th there's things going on in this world that are impacting certain people and not others. Mm -hmm. Right. On a basic level. Mm -hmm. um, so I, and that, so that's one level of interpersonal. I'd say the institutional is when you start to see more accountability, mm -hmm. like we, we all spoke about in previous conversations with um you know, uh, the criminal justice system. So so holding the officers who do do questionable things or, or criminal things even, them actually being prosecuted for that, right? Um, and put in jail for that, all right? So, I mean, I, I just think those are two examples of how we can see some progress on, on both sides. Paul, yes, how does that make you feel? What, what thoughts cross your mind as you take a look at we have a man, he's, he's walking to his car, uh, police officers are, are standing behind you, a bunch of them. There's a considerable gap between them, right? His arms are up in the air like this, walking away. He is not a threat from what I can see. 
he is not an imminent threat, even remotely at that point in time. Maybe you can say he might hop in his car and become a threat if, if because it doesn't even seem that that's the reason why he pulled over. So it seems like there's no danger to anybody's life at the present time. And yet all of a sudden when, you, when the camera swings around, you see a man on the floor dying and eventually does die. What goes off in your mind? Uh, what goes off in you emotionally when you think about this? Honestly, man, I, I don't know. I think the best word is really just frustration. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, and I don't know, a sense of uncertainty. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would say frustration because, like, it's just unnecessary. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it just it doesn't have to get to that point. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't have to die for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Even for a reason. Like, people just don't have to die. You know what I'm saying? Those kind of situations. And it's, I mean, the, the reality is that it, it really could be any one of us. Like, any one of us can go out and just be, you know, binding our business and happen to get stuck in the wrong place at the wrong time. And, um, you know, next thing, we're the ones on the news. You know what I'm saying? And so... I saw, I saw a, a video of... Uh, white or Caucasian looking gentleman uh, and he was actually fighting it looked like a female and a male cop inside of like a, a room or what have you yeah. and he was going hard mm-hmm. and yet they never once I didn't even see them reach for their mm-hmm. gun now they did slug it out in terms mm-hmm. of you know what I'm saying fist to fist right. and they were punching at him he was mm-hmm. punching at them but they never reached down to begin using deadly force mm-hmm. against this man what does, and any of y'all can answer this, what does that make you, like, w- w- when you think about that contrast in terms of treatment, w- what, what, what goes off? What, what, what thoughts arise? What do you want to... Well, it just brings to light that the, the chi- dichotomy that exists, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, between how, you know, black men are treated versus, you know, men of other non-black. You know, white men in particular. And not even white men. Like, uh, look at the... I was just reading an article from the Daily News, New York Daily News, talking about how, you know, um, the terrorists... Uh, well, oh, right, terrorists, right, But the right, guy right. who planted well, bombs... Well, we'll in, the bombs but, but, yeah, yeah, the guy who planted the bombs in New York and New Jersey. And how, you know, when the police were trying to apprehend him, mm-hmm. you know, he shot two cops, and mm-hmm. yet still... He was taken alive. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was mm-hmm. taken on a stretcher, but still they made an effort to keep him alive mm-hmm. so that they could question him and those kind of things. Right. And so to me, it doesn't make sense why they can do that in that situation where it exhibits good police work. Mm-hmm. But on the other side, you know, there's just there's a man who's just minding his business and he ends up getting killed. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so to me, there's just, it really doesn't make any sense. And it's completely senseless. And like uh, Randall was saying, it, I think to me, it comes down to, a lot of the anger comes down to accountability mm-hmm. and the fact that, you know, the cops aren't held responsible, mm-hmm. ultimately, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Nobody really loses their jobs. I mean, some people might get, you know, paid leaves and those mm-hmm. kind of things, but nobody's getting prosecuted. Mm-hmm. Nobody's really getting uh, the repercussions that are warranted, you know, mm-hmm. for the actions that they're mm-hmm. taking. And so... To me, I think that's where at least some of my frustration comes from. Randall, why do you think that this is happening? Why do you think that this is going down? Like, what, what is actually causing? Can can we get to? Can we deconstruct this thing and figure out what is causing this? Are we hated by another group of people? Um, um, you know, are these genuine mistakes? Mm-hmm. Uh, What's causing this, right. in your opinion? Yeah, and, and I would say I would say it really comes down to how we value a certain set of lives or over others, right? Some part of that, how we attach value to a particular life could come down to a circumstance like that, right? Yeah. The value came in being able to interrogate him and potentially in, uh, prevent other terrorist acts like that, right? right? The value that we attach to any of these gentlemen who, who were recently killed mm. is, is not non existent because there, there's another factor that's in causing us to interpret them as not contributing to society, right? As being per- perpetual criminals or, or kind of what 
what is negative about our society or extra dangerous, right? And and I think you have to acknowledge both sides that it, it's not necessarily that that it, it's not always bred from hate because we we in one of these most recent circumstances it was a black officer that right. that killed right. a black man, right? So it's not always spawned directly from hate, but there's certain things that that you know were very much at the fabric of, of the society that are causing us to interpret a certain set of lies as valuable and others not mm -hmm. you know so i think I, I just really think we have to acknowledge that first to then you know fix the problem mm -hmm. right you you can't you can't just say i don't see this you know um you know race isn't a thing and race isn't involved in all of these things right it, it may not have been a conscious decision mm -hmm based on race, but it was a subconscious decision that might have been based on race or that used implicit bias to interpret what was right and or wrong about the situation. So that that is what I think the issue is. That's why this happened. Do you think poli do I think you think that pol changing policies in this nation will lead to the results that we are looking for? Do do you think that it uh, policy changes will change the plight of black men and black women in this country. Well, what type of policy changes are you um, thinking about? I'm talking about uh, changes in uh, statutes and laws and, uh, you know, that kind of thing, uh, judiciary process or what have you. Do you think that that will change uh, the situation that blacks find themselves in? I think so. I mean, on a certain level, I think that there are policies that exist that inherently are that are inherently biased against and i think that's a great term that you use the inherent bias and uh, so it, it there's a policy issue but there's also just uh, a mindset issue as well and uh, i think that's something that uh, just conversations like these are important because important for people to recognize that biases are learned. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily born into us. Mm -hmm. And so these are things that really have to be unlearned, mm -hmm. you know, on a certain level. And, or just stopped being passed along, if that makes any sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. uh, you don't, you're not born with a natural dislike for somebody who doesn't look like you, you know what I'm saying? You're taught that by and not just your parents, but by society, by the things that we see, the movies, the everything, mm -hmm. we're ingrained subconsciously mm -hmm. to perceive certain groups a certain way, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so those things are more than just policies. Policies obviously play a big role in that, but they're like, those are bigger issues that we kind of have to deal with on a larger level, I think. Yeah, and I want to go on record as saying that police brutality and the loss of life unjustly it, it is a, a problem across the board, right? I mean, yes, there are white men that are being killed by police, right? Uh, yes, there are women, black men and, and women, white uh, women and men who are getting killed as well. There are police officers getting killed as well, right? So the, the issue isn't exclusively in my mind that black people are the only ones getting killed mm -hmm. right the the so all that needs to be addressed mm -hmm. right um but it's, it's the disproportionate rate in which black men mm -hmm. and and black women mm -hmm. are, are being killed by police particularly unarmed so to answer your question man i, I think the yeah, part of it is uh has to occur at the policy level yes but but I think particularly at the local level, because again, that that's that's when you're going to see direct change and impact, immediate change almost in, in in each and every community, particularly the ones that are plagued by violent crime and this and that, because you know that seems to be the excuse that you know wherever there's violent crime, which you know is more than likely in, in black communities, that's why you see all these shooting deaths. Well, if we change policy at that local level. We're more likely to see some some changes quicker than if it goes through Senate and Congress and this and that. But yeah, I, I still do think it has to be a combination of that and accepting the fact that, I mean, even capitalism is meant for somebody to be down here and somebody up here. Mm -hmm. Somebody's pockets getting fatter mm -hmm. as a result of people losing something. So, do you think one of the things that I've noticed is that 
and I've heard some of these these complaints, uh, you know, and some of our, our audience may not have heard uh, this before, but some people are frustrated when other uh, causes are sometimes lumped into the black challenges that we have. Do you think that it, it's dangerous to lump other causes in with the challenges that we particularly have, even though we might care about the, um, the treatment of others just as much? But do you think that there's a danger if we're going to see change in ter- uh, of, of lumping other problems in at the same time? What do y'all think? <laughs> uh, so, so if, if I could use an example, right? So you, you referring to like police brutality as well as like poverty and this and that, or are you talking about Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter, like lumping those like, together? Like Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, or Black Lives right. Matter, and Blue Lives Matter. Right. Um, um, you know, other people groups. Right. Right. Who right. Right. Have also, you know, had challenges over the course of time, but mm. their challenge isn't specifically ours. Do you do you see that there being a challenge in lumping that in right. with the black problem? I, y- yes and no, right? So I think allyship is really important, mm. right? Like the, the way we really make progress is through- Why? Oh, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, I'm no, you're no, 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 you're good, yeah. Okay. It, it's through collective action, right? Mm. Like sometimes if you hear that black issues, these black issues, when, when you hear those articulated by a white person, that has different type of impact, mm-hmm. you know, on you, mm-hmm. right? So, um, and, and I, I think I think there's always room for allyship, whether it's a, uh, a, a situation or circumstance that's disproportionately impacting your community or not, right? Because it's, it's, a, it's a human issue, right? And in, in order to address it and correct it, you know I mean, there's something that we each have to do within our communities in order to interrupt mm-hmm. what's going on. So, so I think I think there's always room for me to jump on board with what's going on with any com- any community, right? Even in North Dakota with the Native Americans, and, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. So, but but at the same time, I, I think a lot of these 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 other movements like Blue Lives and, and, and you know All Lives is always done in in response to to us trying to uh, claim our value, mm-hmm. right? It's always meant to counteract. It's never meant or, or said in, you know, kind of collaboration. And I, I think that can be problematic when all you're doing is saying, no, nah, no, nah, just squash all that, right? We don't care about y'all. We, everybody has issues, mm-hmm. right? So we don't want to hear it because what happens is, man, they got to confront their whole colorblind mentality that race does isn't an issue anymore. So once you do that, they push back with, nope, all lives matter. And, and blue lives, I mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> blue the reason lives. I ask that <laughs> is, is from, from what I do understand, there are certainly challenges in other people groups. And it's not, not all people groups are, are necessarily labeled by a race or what have you, right? It does seem, however, that there is a difference between or, or, or let me not say a difference, but let's say a, a certain type of magnitude, um, or maybe, and maybe I'll just admit to not even having the proper word for it, right? Mm-hmm. But the challenge of having a systemic uh, uh, issue or, 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 or challenge in place that dehumanizes a group of people to the and, and, and blocks them from opportunity right which is kind of different than other issues where certainly they, there are challenges there right everybody needs to be treat, treated equally um, everybody should have the same access to opportunity however it seems like there are certain uh, there are certain groups that, who haven't had let's say uh, things in place that says that like yo you you are you you, your group of people are certain, just blocked, period, you know what I'm saying, from access, blocked from access, not only blocked from access, but your group of people are stripped of your own identity from where you were and displaced into a land that is not your own, 
You know what I'm saying? And and not just displaced into a land that is not your own, but yes, you might be freed or what have you, but you are free now within a land where you don't own anything. You're the you're you you, you are free in a situation in a society where everything is owned and operated by your oppressor. You see what I'm saying? So 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 when I think about it in that context, uh, there there is to me. Uh, some separate issues, mm -hmm. right? One of the things that you, you know you might hear if you're in, uh, if if anybody goes to counseling or what have you, is that they often say, "Listen, don't try to address two issues at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If you're addressing one issue, address that issue, get to the bottom of that issue, then you can move on to the next issue. Otherwise, what tends to happen is that you try to address this issue, but then you try to address this issue over here, and then you just end up being spread thin, and no real in-depth issues get, get addressed for anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was just my rant real quick. No, no, no I, I mean, I definitely, definitely agree, and yeah. one of the easier examples mm -hmm. to look at is, is uh, any health mm -hmm. issues, right? Like, there's all types of cancer. Mm -hmm. Right, but sometimes you you do need to focus on colon. You do mm -hmm. need to focus on breast cancer because of whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, again, it may be disproportionately impacting a particular group of people. The onset might be more likely um, if you if your lifestyle might <laughs> you know or, or asthma for me. You know, if you live in, in an impoverished community, the likelihood is you you live closer to um, you know more pollution. You know I mean, so so those are things, yes, that that you need to focus on, um, in order to really make some headway on, on progress. So I would agree with that in theory. Yeah. Okay. Well, any final takeaways that we want to leave our audience with in this discussion about um, um, his name just left my head. Terrence Crutcher. Terrence. Uh, Terrence Crutcher. Yeah. Any final takeaways? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, I mean, not to, I don't want to over spiritualize things, but, you know, as Christians, we got to recognize that this is a, a sin issue, a sin mm -hmm. problem. And we have to, we need more love, man. I mean, we were talking about this earlier. You know, we, we have to value mm -hmm. the lives of everyone you know, equally. And, you know, I think that we have issues that are specific to ourselves. But, and, it, and it's, it's human nature to kind of focus in on just your issues and the things that are you know, affecting your people and kind of uh, let them take care of that. And I think that's kind of what's our issue right now, you know what I'm saying? We are um, the only ones, like everybody's kind of looking after themselves, you know what I'm saying? And nobody's really um, trying to be empathetic or to, to really understand the plight of others. And I don't know, I, I think that um, there's like an old proverb or a parable or a story that kind of talks about that, like, you know, people come for a certain group of people and because they're not your people, you don't think about them. Mm -hmm. And then they come after another group of people and you don't think about them. And then they come after you, you look for help and everybody else mm -hmm. is gone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so if we don't really take care of each other, we're never going to make progress. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And even just specifically to this black lives issue, like we're not going to be able to come out of this on our own without the help of other mm -hmm. groups, other groups of people who are, you know, who take issue with the fact that we are being mistreated and our people are being mistreated and uh, other human lives are being mistreated. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, I just think it's, you know, especially as Christians, that, that should be our perspective. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have to not just preach, you know what I'm saying, not just sermonize, but we have to be active in spreading love and in, um, you know, looking after other people and just mm -hmm. valuing the lives of other people, even if they don't look like us. You know what I'm saying? Right? 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of an extension of what you said, Paul. I, 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 I would challenge everybody to try to engage at least one person across difference, like this week, next week, or, or whatever, mm -hmm. because I, I really think um, that that's a part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Right. We're, we're, again, we're throwing statistics at each other. You know, we're, we're hiding behind our, our computers, our laptops, smartphones, whatever. And we're allowing anecdotal stuff to really become truth to us, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, I mean, we're, we're not basing a lot of what we're, we're seeing and, and being impacted by on personal experience, um, personal stories and so forth. So engage somebody maybe who you may not that you know you may not agree with uh, politically or, or you know philosophically, and, and try to try to have a conversation, a, a constructive conversation, without feeling like you have to agree, right? Or, or without judging that person ahead of time as to how they have arrived at their sense of truth, right? Because, and I think that if we can each engage somebody across difference at a, a day. Right, we'll really start to see more empathy, like you were talking about, right, and, and less judgment, um, and 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 just, man, we, we we have to know how to engage and talk to, to mm -hmm. each other, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that that would be my piece. Yeah, um, and I guess you know just to sum up what you all said, uh, Paul really hit the nail on the head as far as what I would have said, um, but that concept of love and valuing the other. You know, um, hmm. I, I think that that is one of the key components that is missing. When I look at the, you know, the challenge that black folks have right now with the police is not that we think that police are bad. Yeah. Obviously, we need police officers. We all know police officers personally. Mm -hmm. Paul and I, we grew up with friends who are police officers now. Mm -hmm. I know white police officers. I know yeah. black police officers. Yeah. Both kinds I have that are good friends of mine, mm -hmm. right? The challenge that I have or the challenge that we have as black people right now is that in general, it just doesn't feel like those who are supposed to protect and serve us love us. You see what I'm saying? And I don't just mean that they've taken up a, a call to protect and serve, and by all means that's admirable, but I think we all know the difference between when somebody just has to protect and serve versus out of duty versus mm -hmm yo, this person really actually wants to see the best for me and my people, right? And then when, and then not just on that front, right, but black people also, toward the other, toward what, who we might consider our oppressor, um, to still combat that oppression, that oppressiveness with love, you know what I'm saying? To say, listen, even if you choose not to value me, I will still value you. Why? Because I, if I choose to devalue you, then I subsequently devalue myself also. Mm. And I dehumanize myself also mm. when I devalue you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then we all start going, at, you know, uh, seeing who will sink to the bottom fastest. So I think it goes back to we have to see the value in each other. We have to see the value in uh, our brother, who, who, our brother and our sister who may not look like us may not believe like us, um, you know, but, but, but still say, you know what, you are valuable, if nothing else, but for the very sake that God thinks that you're valuable, mm -hmm. you know, and um, if for no other reason, you, you are valuable. So uh, we hope that this episode has been helpful to you all. Um, again, my boy Randall, my boy Paul, this is born, average is failure, success is internal, character is legendary, and we are out of here. Y'all see y'all on the next one.